Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to create this pixel sorting effect in Max. We're going to start with an almost empty Max patch. The only thing I've already created are this um, jit.world object because we're working with textures and jit.gl picks, which means glsl essentially, so we need a rendering context. Here I have a jit.p window so we can see what we're doing. And this is just an input video. This tutorial roughly consists of three parts. The first one is setting up a feedback system because the way this pixel sorting algorithm works is by introducing a feedback loop. Um, the second one is comparing and swapping pixels. And the third one is getting creative with what we've built so far. So to set up a feedback system, I'll start by creating um, two textures um, with dimension of 1920 by 1080 at depth zero and at type float 32, which is important when I'm working with feedback. I'll need two of those. Then I need a jit.gl jit.gl picks codebox object. Um, if you're not working in Max 9, you can just uh, use a regular jit.gl um, picks um, object and then just create the codebox inside of this object. Everything else should be pretty much the same, I think. But I like to use it like this because it's exposed on the outside and it's easier to see what's going on. So I'll start here by um, declaring our inputs and outputs. So I'll have one input and call it uh, pick in for picture in. It's going to be input one. Then I'll have fb in for feedback in, which is going to be um, input two. Then I'll create an out color. Let's call it out call. Um, this is going to be a picture in for now. And then I'll create two outlets. Um, outlet one and two, and both of them are sending out this out color. So let's move this a bit around because we'll need more space. So this video is coming in through this texture. It's then going to get sent to our jit.world. And if I didn't make any mistakes, this should already be running. Okay, this is working. And um, yeah, output two is going to get sent here to this texture and then coming back in here as our feedback input. Well, let's make this a bit tidier. So now that we've set up the feedback system, we can, yeah, implement our pixel sorting algorithm. With normal pixel sorting that you can do with JavaScript or Python or something like that, you're essentially looking at all the pixels and rearranging them. So you're comparing all the pixels at the same time. But this JitGLPix code box is essentially working like a fragment shader. So each line of code gets executed on each of the pixels of our input texture independently. So what we can do here is for each pixel, I can access and sample other pixels, other neighboring pixels but I can change the neighboring pixels. So that's why I'm working with feedback. So for each pixel, um, I will look at the current pixel and one of its neighbors. And if the neighbor is brighter, I'm, I'm going to swap them. So I'm going to assign current pixel to its neighbor. And if it's not brighter, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And doing this over and over again in a feedback loop, 
um, results in the pixels getting more and more sorted with each iteration. So first I'm going to create this um, neighbor, which is just um, sampling the input texture in one at a different position. So at the normalized coordinates, which are coordinates between zero and one. So using it like this essentially means that every um, pixel from the input texture is assigned at its original position. But we don't want to look at the original position, we want to look at a neighboring position. So we need to introduce some kind of offset. And to create this offset, um, I want to use, I mean, I could just write something like um, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, but I want to use um, an angle and a distance, which is much more intuitive. So to do so, I'm going to create a parameter up here, call it angle, set it to 90 degrees. Then I'm going to create a parameter called um, distance and set it to one. So to get from angle and distance to an X and Y offset that we can use inside our sample function. Let's put this up here. Um, the X component, we can get the X component by using the cosine of our angle divided by 180 and then multiplied by pi. So why are we doing this? Here we're working with um, angles in degrees and here we're working with angles in radians and to get from degrees to radians, we can divide it by 180 and then multiply it by pi. Again, I could just use um, some multiple of pi up here, but it's much easier and much more intuitive for me to just use degrees and then do this transformation down here um, to get to radians. And yeah, this is going to be the exposition around the unit circle, but we don't want it around the unit circle, we want it at a specific distance, so I'm multiplying this by our distance. But we're not quite done yet because um, this distance is an integer and as we said before, these normalized coordinates are coordinates between 0 and 1. So if I, for example, would introduce an offset of 5 and 6 down here, um, essentially nothing would be happening because 5 just means that we're like wrapping around the texture five times and six would mean that we're wrapping around the texture six times. So five and six means essentially zero and zero. So we need to introduce an offset that's um, between zero and one. And I would like to um, define this distance as a distance in pixels. So if I right in here a distance of one, I want it to be a distance of one pixel. So I have to multiply it by the size of one pixel. To get the size of one pixel, I can just say one divided by the dimension of the whole input texture. So all I have to do now is multiply this by our pixel size and then I'll have an X offset at an angle of 90 degrees with a distance of one pixel. And the same thing I can do for our Y offset. The only thing that's different is that here we're using um, sine and not cosine. So to get our neighbor, I can just introduce this offset now. So it's this vector x and y. So what this essentially means that for each pixel we're looking at its neighbor which is located um, one pixel away at an angle of 90 degrees. So now that we have our neighbor we can compare our current pixel with our neighboring pixels and I'm not going to do here I um, used the input texture 
but I want to do this comparison within the feedback loop so it's getting applied over and over again. So I'm going to change this to input 2 so we're not looking at our neighbors within this um, input texture but we're looking at the neighbors of the feedback texture. So now I'm going to compare our current pixel with the neighboring pixel. So I'm going to say if, um, and again, I'm using the feedback texture here. If feedback in is, um, let's say smaller than our neighbor, then, oh, not here, it belongs here, then something needs to happen down here. But um, the way it's written now, we're just comparing the color values, but I want to compare the brightness of the pixels. So I'm going to use the RGB to HSL function, which turns our RGB values into hue, saturation, and brightness of the pixel. And to get the brightness value, um, I just take the last component, which is the Z component. And the same, of course, applies to our neighboring pixel, RGB to HSL. And I'm also taking the Z component. And if the neighbor is brighter than our current pixel, I'm going to say that our current pixel, so feedback in, is going to become our neighboring pixel. So, but at the moment we're just applying everything to our feedback texture, which is, yeah, more or less empty. What I would like to do now is creating a new parameter. Let's call it FB for feedback. Set it to 0 0.9. And this is going to control how much of the input texture we're using and how much of the feedback texture we're using. So our out color is going to be defined as mix, which is a linear interpolation between our input texture called pick in and our feedback texture, which is the texture coming in here, which already ran through this comparison. And then we'll say um, that this linear interpolation is controlled by this feedback factor up here. Um, and if I didn't make any mistakes, this should already be working. Yeah, something's working here. I'll set up these parameters outside to change them. Angle and where is the distance? No, that's wrong. Here is the distance. Um. Let's maybe change the feedback. I can see some pixel sorting is already happening. And what we can also do is stop this video right here. So the effect can settle in, but when we stop it, then this texture doesn't get banked. So I'll create a jit.bang object. Um, which we also don't have in um, max 8, I think. So you could just take the outlet that's coming out of here to bang the texture. So now you can see this um, pixel sorting effect in its full beauty. I can also change the angle here. So it's going into a different direction than when I'm introducing more or when I restart the video, you can see it's moving around. And as soon as I stop, this is going to sort. So I can also change the distance because with the distance of one, each pixel is looking at its immediate neighbor. But if I say this is free, for example, it looks at the pixel that's three pixels away. And so this is 
yeah, even even more extreme. Yeah. Changing this around a bit. So this is essentially the pixel sorting algorithm. We can now, yeah, get a little creative with with what we built here. For example, we could, I mean, as it is set up right now, every every pixel is looking at the in the same direction at the same distance. So an easy thing to to do would be um, using the brightness of the um, feedback input to control the angle, so that for every pixel the angle or the neighbor or the sorting direction is different. So to do this, I'm going to create a variable called control and say that this is RGB to HSL of our feedback in. So our control texture is, is just the, the brightness value of our um, feedback texture. And then I can use this here instead of our angle variable. And because this is going to be a value between zero and one, we don't need to divide by 180. We can just multiply it by pi and see what's happening. So you can see now the sorting is, is looking more organic because it's it's not just um, getting sorted in one direction. Um, we can increase this value so we get bigger angles out of it. Let's try multiplying it by 5 so it gets more swirly. So to say what happens if we use 50. Okay, I don't like that. Let's, let's use 3. And what happens if we change the distance? Okay, then it's just blurring. Let's keep it at a distance of one. And let's press play. So you can see every time I'm stopping it, the feedback sorting is doing its magic here. This is essentially the algorithm I wanted to show you. I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.